This is so much better on Betaflight 4.3. This is the iFlight uh, Evoke F6, the six inch freestyle quad that I compared to the five inch and asked the question, why doesn't anybody freestyle six inch? Oh yeah, let's see that. A little bump there. Oh, big bump there. And one of the reasons that people don't fr freestyle six inch is that it doesn't fly as well. Like the PID tune isn't as good. It, it's hard, it's just uh, not as good. And I said, what if you put it on Betaflight 4.3, how much better would it be? And it turns out it's a lot freaking better. I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're gonna learn something today. It's so much better. <laughs> All right, let's put Betaflight 4.3 on this quad. And I am going to go through the steps with you, but uh, I'm not gonna talk you through every single how-to because I have a Betaflight 4.3 PID tuning guide where I go through these basic steps. Uh, and uh, I'll put a link to that down in the video description if you wanna check that out. But we're just gonna go through the steps. And the very first thing we need to do is back up the configuration of the quad. Uh, we will do that by going to the presets tab and pressing save backup. And that will create a backup. It's basically just a diff all of the command of the CLI, and we'll save that. Okay, now that that is backed up, we have the ability to go back to 4.2 without having to find the configuration you know, on the manufacturer's website or any of that nonsense. Next, we are gonna go to Firmware Flasher. We're gonna hit Auto Detect, and we'll see that the firmware is iFlight Blitz F722. We're gonna enable Show Unstable Releases. We're gonna go to Release Candidate, and that's gonna give us access to Betaflight 4.3.0. RC3, and then we will flash the firmware. While that tool is flashing, we're gonna go here to the Betaflight 4.3 Safe Migration tool. Uh, there's a link to that in the video description as well. And I'm just gonna take my config dump. I'm gonna select all and copy. I'm gonna paste it in here. And let's see what kind of stuff it thinks is safe to carry forward. Let's have a look at that. We'll just make a new text file and we will examine that. So the Betaflight Safe Migration tool will have gone through this CLI dump and marked lines that it thinks might be safe or might not, things that definitely are not safe to carry forward and things that definitely are safe to carry forward. And so we can see here, like the features, the beeper setup, this is the ports tab, here's the LED configuration, here's the modes tab, uh, that's all safe to carry forward. Uh, but it's really convenient when we get into things like master where like individual lines might be safe and other lines might not be safe. This is really nice. We're just going to take this whole thing and we're going to copy it and we'll go to the CLI and we will just paste in all that nonsense and see what comes out the other end. Mm, that didn't fly. Everything else seems fine. Yeah. Safe. Next step. What let's do is let's go to the Betaflight official presets and we're gonna do the RC link preset, which you should always do. This is Crossfire at 150 Hertz. So let's find that. Crossfire 150 Hertz and we will choose freestyle uh, for our smoothing setting. All right, pick that and save and reboot. As far as the PIDs go, we're gonna start with the defaults and we're gonna fly it just with the sliders right in the dead middle defaults. However, there are a couple of little changes I'm gonna make. Uh, one of them is going to be, many people have suggested that you should use dynamic idle instead of static motor idle percent. Uh, the motor idle percent is right here. Uh, and instead of doing that, you can put in an RPM value which will dynamically be targeted using a PID controller and can give better, better, better results. And people say that around 2000 is a good idle value for a five inch. We'll try that out and we'll see what happens. Um, hey there folks, Joshua from the future here. I have made a mistake here. I need to call it out so you don't make the same mistake. My goal is to have a dynamic idle value of 2000 RPM. So I put 2000 in, but the idle value is actually put in in one hundreds of RPMs. So I should have put 20 not 2000. Uh, I flew several packs. My idle value was way too high and the quad would not descend and everything was weird. And then I realized something was wrong and I went back and fixed it. And that's what you will see in this video. So put 20 for 2000 RPM, 30 for 3000, 40 for 4000 and so on. Maybe we'll need to go a little higher because we have larger motors and larger props. Other than that, I think we're just going to stay right on the defaults. 
And then here in the filter settings, we almost certainly can, I, I always say if you're using RPM filtering, you almost certainly can delete driver low pass one at the very least. Uh, and we're gonna do that, but we won't push any further than that. That is a pretty solid baseline uh, to test out Betaflight 4.3 defaults. And I know we're not on the stock defaults like we did the RC Link preset and we did the dynamic idle and little change to the filters, but I feel like those are changes I would make on basically any like new quad for sure. Um, and that's what we're gonna treat as the defaults. And the first thing we're gonna do is just take it out to the field and do some flips and rolls and see if it's gotten any better. It's so much better. Like if I really push it, I can bring out a little bobble. If I'm really rough on the sticks, I get a little bobble out of it, but it's so much better than even the iFlight uh, tune, the factory tune was on 4.2. And the prop wash handling is also better. Just, feels so much better to fly. Now what you might be thinking is, how is Bardwell gonna tune this in the field? Because since I'm using DJI on this quad, I don't have access to the Betaflight OSD menus to do my PID tuning. Haha, <laughs> but I've got a trick for you. And the trick is that I'm gonna use the Betaflight Lua script, which the nightly version of the Betaflight Lua script made for use with Betaflight 4.3 has access to the Betaflight 4.3 uh, slider, tuning sliders. Check this out. So I'm gonna press the sys key here to get to the tools menu. And then we're gonna go to beta flight setup and we'll go to simplified tuning and here we've got access to all of the beta flight sliders they don't look like sliders they're just numbers but they are the sliders and i think the first thing i want to do is raise the p and i gains we got a little bit of bounce back after flips and rolls and typically what I like to do is raise the P gains and see if that bounce back gets sharper and smaller or if it gets bigger. And that tells me which one going the right direction. So let's raise the P and I gains up and let's just uh, like raise it a fair whack, like from one to 1 1.4. And then we have to long press and save page to make it take effect. Now let's go fly. Now that increased eye gain shouldn't have a big effect when doing flips and rolls because Betaflight's eye term relax will reduce the eye gain when the sticks are being deflected. Oh, that looks bigger. Mm -hmm. I think that's bigger. I think that is a bigger bounce. So we're just gonna land right here. Take the P and the I gains up to 2.0. Again, just try to figure out if things are getting better or getting worse. Oh, much sharper. Yeah, that's an improvement. You see how sharp that is? It really... It's much sharper, which I think means that I like that big sharp bounce better than a big soft bounce. And the reason I say I like that better is my gut feeling is that the default PIDs are too low for a six inch quadcopter. Uh, in general, the bigger the quadcopter, the higher the PID gains you need in order to get the acceleration you need to overcome the mass and momentum of the quad. So I am trying to overtune the P gain and get a good sharp bounce, which tells us we have enough acceleration from the P term to get good sharp response. And then we're gonna use the D term to sort of tame that and bring that back down. But we gotta find the right level for P first. And I think we're at least close to there. Now I think we're gonna raise the D gains and see if we can counteract that. Let's raise the D gains to like 1.7. And here I'm thinking about the P to D ratio. The stock ratio is one to one. So now we have a 1.7 to two ratio. So the D is slightly less. We're just gonna see 
what that produces. little bounce on that left roll, but better. We go even higher, we go back to that one-to-one -one ratio. So we'll go all the way up to D gains of 2.0. This is really, I'm surprised we have to go this high. I actually think I know why we're having to go this high on the PIDs. Well, I'm gonna hold, keep that to myself for now. Better. Better. How about nose hold? That flips and rolls are looking pretty good. Nose hold looks pretty good. Well, okay, some of you are rolling your eyes right now because I said nose hold looks pretty good. And you can clearly see the nose of the quad shifting up and down as I punch and drop the throttle. What I mean there is it's about as good as I feel like we can reasonably expect from this quadcopter and this. It's about as good as we can reasonably expect. That was a big improvement, but why did the P and the D gains have to go to such an extreme level? to go to a 2x multiplier just to get like semi-decent performance out of this quad. I'm gonna tell you in just a second, but before I do, would you mind hitting the like button? If you're, if you're enjoying this video, get down there, hit the like button. Thank you so much. So the reason I think we need the PIDs to be so high to deal with this situation is that these motors are actually undersized for six inch props. These motors are only about 10% bigger than like a 2207 motor, which is pretty ideal for a five inch prop, but a six inch prop is something like 40% bigger in disc area or diameter, I can't remember which. Basically, these motors aren't torquey enough to really do the best job. Um, but we can try to make the most of them by messing with the PID tune. And the next thing I wanna do in that respect is two things. Number one, we're gonna go into simplified tuning and we're gonna raise the feed forward gains as well. Feed forward will cause the motors to begin to respond as soon as we move the sticks. It'll sharpen up the stick feel. And that is a good thing to do, especially when you have a heavier quad with underpowered motors to help it be just a little bit more responsive. I'm gonna go from, I'm not gonna go all the way to 2.0 because I don't wanna just make too big of a step, but I'm gonna go for up to 1.5 and we're gonna see how that feels. Other thing I wanna do is I wanna find the iTerm relax threshold. Surely that's here, yes, iTerm relax. Um, and iTerm relax, one of the problems you get with a bigger quad with undersized motors is that it's not very responsive. And that causes something called I-term wind up. And uh, that causes a so, slow soft bounce back at the end of flips and rolls. So uh, I-term relax is specifically designed to combat I-term wind up. And by reducing the I-term relax cutoff threshold from 15 to 10 or maybe even lower, we can, uh, we can prevent the I-term from winding up and make the quad feel a little bit looser. So let's try that. Oh yeah, I can immediately feel it's looser in just normal flight. Little bounce there still, but overall, pretty good. Hey there, it's Joshua from the future here, and as usual, I am much smarter than Joshua in the past. That bounce back wasn't there before I made these changes. I don't think it was there. At the time that I was flying, I was like, oh, there's a little bounce back, and it kind of thought maybe it's the same as before. But during editing, it looks way sharper and way different. What's weird about this is that feed forward and iTerm relax, the changes we made should not be able to cause this type of bounce back. So I can only guess that it was there and I'm just being rougher on the sticks, but I do want to acknowledge that this flight, actually the flips and rolls look worse than the previous flight. And I got to tell you, we're, we're not going to dive into that because Joshua in the past didn't. Anyway. How does the prop wash handling? and it immediately feels looser through these areas as well, although still not as loose as a five inch, but wow. 
maybe even raise feet forward a little bit more. Oh, don't hit myself, don't hit myself. Oh, yeah, so much looser. That eye turn relax makes such a big difference. Little, see, we still have little bounces, and I'm not sure how much we're gonna tune that out with these motors, but. It's so much looser than it was. The eye turn relax is like lowering the eye, turn, the eye gate, but only when you're deflecting the sticks and doing sharp moves. So the eye, tur the eye turn stays on track during like throttle down. The nose is, you see the nose is not drifting at all when I lower the throttle there. But then when I start deflecting the sticks, the eye turn gets out of the way and s doesn't stiffen up the quad. Oh, this is, this is good. This is good. Oh, this is a big improvement. <laughs> Almost. Didn't quite make it there. That's okay. This is so much better. Ooh, a little twitch there. I think that was me on the sticks. I don't know. That's, this is, this is nice. This is nice. No shade on iFlight, I, I mean, I don't know. Could they have done as good a job as this on Betaflight 4.2 or is Betaflight 4.3 that much better? I don't know. But this is a completely different quad and frankly, it doesn't overcome the fundamental physics of a six inch. It still has some of that floatiness and drag and that's just gonna be a function of disc area and surface area. But in terms of the flight feel and agility and nimbleness, it has really closed the gap. If you're interested in carrying heavier GoPros, this is a Hero 8, but if you're interested in carrying something like a Hero 10 and you want that longer flight time with larger batteries, uh, this is absolutely a great quadcopter to get. There's links in the video description if you want to pick it up. By the way, their affiliate links means you can support the work that I'm doing here. It doesn't cost you a single penny. You just click the link, you do your shopping, you check out, and I get a commission. Super nice. Thanks to iFlight for sending me this quad, and thank you for watching. If you are interested in getting Betaflight 4.3, then I'll put a card on screen how you can get it downloaded and try it out today. It's still technically in release candidate, so technically there could still be a bug here or there, but for a lot of people, it is pretty stable, and they are really enjoying it. Happy flying, you guys.